to be recognised like this, it's just incredible. Like on such a kind of global stage, like and with the nominees as well who were nominated alongside me. Like the fact other sports people have voted for me means so much. Like this is what I do day in day out. Like I live for my sport. So yeah, to to get recognised by other sports people as well just means so much. In 2016, the funding for women's BMX got cut and that was basically because we had no women in Rio for the games so basically I had to work part-time as a teaching assistant and also crowdfund to get to the races to eventually qualify for the games. It was difficult at times but I never lost sight of the Olympics and where I wanted to be. There was a lot in and around getting prepared for Tokyo. The temperature and the humidity there is like no other, so obviously not like here in Manchester. The track as well was one of the longest tracks on circuits we've ever ridden. Um, I think it was like 40 odd seconds long, when usually they're about 30, so it's an extra 10 seconds of work. A lot went into it, a lot of preparation, but I fully, fully trusted the process and my coaches, and it all worked out in the end. Being an Olympic gold medalist makes me feel I don't know, some type of mad way. Like, honestly, um, I would have never thought I was going to achieve that in a million years. Like, I went there to take it all in, embrace the moment, and was able to come over a gold medal. So, to achieve that so early on in my career is mind blowing. And I want to continue this momentum and momentum of success. So, obviously, I think if I wanted to be the best ever female BMS athlete, I probably would have to get three gold. So, I mean, it is there, the thought is there, but we'll just see how it goes. I, I, my main focus now is Paris, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. But I think if I want to be the best ever, that's what I've got to do.